recently became a licensed amateur radio operator. People keep asking me why all of a sudden I decided to do this. So I thought I would make a short video to answer that question. And this is it. The history of how radio was invented fascinates me. The invention of the telegraph this year celebrates its 175th anniversary. To make the leap from wired to wireless was nothing short of magic to anyone living in the 19th century. That thanks to Nikola Tesla. Tesla was a true visionary with a gift of technical insight that many of his time were skeptical of. He wanted to change the world, and he did. What made him different was that he didn't care to profit from it beyond his own basic needs. This made him an enemy of sorts to people like Thomas Edison, whose reason for being was to profit from anything he could. After inventing alternating current and proving to the world that it was a superior means to electrify the world than Edison's direct current was, Tesla went on to invent wireless radio communication. Then he actively took that a step farther to invent a means for the wireless transmission of electricity for the world to use for free. That notion is what convinced many powerful men of the time, such as J.P. Morgan and Thomas Edison, that Tesla had to be stopped, and the reason many of us never learned much about Tesla in school. But the mystery behind the legend of Tesla lights a fire under many of us who pursue hobbies related to the technologies that he pioneered. When Tesla and Marconi proved that the human voice could be propagated through thin air by riding the same ocean of invisible electromagnetic radio waves that the electric pulses of telegraph code did, radio, as the hobby we know it, was created. It was amateur radio operators who first broadcast homebrew programs of news and control music from their home radio shacks as early as 1912. Since 1920, commercial radio found viability through investors willing to pay for advertising time. The great days of early radio proved that technology and magic could be synonymous. I've always been fascinated by this magic and how it reflected and shaped our everyday lives. Recordings of these early days give us a means to experience the lives of our recent ancestors, almost like time travel. It's starting to rain again. The rain had uh, slacked up a little bit. The back motors of the ship are just holding it uh, just enough to keep it from... It's burst into the flesh. Get this started. Get this started. It's rising. And it's rising. It's rising. Terrible. Oh, my. Get out of the way, please. It's running, bursting into flames, and, and it's falling on the morning fast, and all the folks between us. This is terrible. This is the one of the worst catastrophes in the world. Oh, it's... It's, 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 it's like 20... Oh, four or five hundred feet into the sky, and it, it's a terrific crash, ladies and gentlemen. The smoke and the flames now, and the flame is crashing to the ground, not quite to the mooring mass. All the humanity and all the fans are just feeding around it. I don't do it. I can't even talk to people. The friends are out there. It's a, it's, it's a, oh. I, I can't talk, ladies and gentlemen. Honestly, it's just laying down massive smoking wreckage. And everybody can't hardly breathe and talk and scream. Lady, I, I, I'm sorry. Honestly, I, I can hardly breathe. I, I'm going to step inside while I cannot see it. <laughs> Darling, that's terrible. I, I, I Listen, folks, I, I'm going to have to stop for a minute because I've lost the poison. This is the worst thing I've ever witnessed. Ever since those early radio days, global events came into our homes by way of radio. We were there with the prolific announcers and newscasters whenever news was being made. Not only did many countries use radio to broadcast the news, but more interestingly to me was the version of the news that they wanted the rest of the world to hear. Radio was used for propaganda during World War II when German and Japanese radio stations targeted homesick English and American soldiers in an effort to trick them into giving up the war. Hello, you fighting orphans of the Pacific. How strict. This is after her weekend, Annie, back on the air strictly under your 
Deception okay? Well, it better be because this is all request night. And I've got a pretty nice program for my favorite little family, the wandering boneheads of the Pacific Island. The first request is made by none other than the boss. And guess what? He won. When the microphone comes Edward Bowlby to speak to you on the Jewish problem. As in the case of Britain, but previous to this war even more so, the United States is completely under the Hebrew thumb. The so-called wise men of Washington, or brain trust of the president, are all Jews. It is of additional interest to note that the financial conference at Bretton Woods, the food conference at Hot Springs, and the assistance and reconstruction conference in London were all overpoweringly represented by Jews. And before we conclude this program, here are some messages from British prisoners of war to their next of kin. The first one is from Private Thomas Smart, 293-2886. It's addressed to Mrs. T. Smart, 182 Overton Road, Kirkcaldy, Fiveshire, Scotland. Dear Cathy, I was captured by the Germans and am now in Germany. And I'm well, so do not worry. I will write and give my address as soon as possible. All my love, Thomas Mark. My father grew up when radio was the center of all communication and entertainment. He had the ball. He loved listening to the big bands broadcasting from the famous ballrooms of New York and Chicago. He listens to every ball game on the radio, even if he had to tune into a static and distant station if it was the only one covering the game he wanted to hear. He listened in with his dog, Cincy, who he named after his favorite Cincinnati baseball team. His favorite radio programs were the creepy After Dark series like Lights Out, Suspense, and adventure shows like The Shadow. <laughs> Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? <laughs> the shadow knows. It's no surprise that when he bought a portable tape recorder, the first thing he would do was pretend to be a radio broadcaster giving the play-by-play -play for the big game or the calls of an exciting horse race. And now, the marshal calls for the Pacers. And they're off. And it's Bruce Western on the inside, Lee Lyon on the extreme outside, and Sandillon, Butch Harmony, and Yankee Lou. Now, as we come around the first quarter in 29-3, and three, it's Bruce Western on fr in front, Yankee Lou is second, Lee Lyon third, and Sindelman and Butch Harmony. This is American, the American Broadcasting Network. Even my mother was somewhat involved in radio, and she performed as a musical talent for the country and western radio program, Tumbleweed Tom and Dolly, back in the 1940s and 50s. Thanks for watching, and please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to share this exciting hobby with me.
Be sure to comment if there's something you'd like to see featured on this channel. first Russian satellite. This satellite is the first in the history of the world. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Kilowatt trees, Antibar Ocean. Contest. Seek your contest, Kilowatt trees, Antibar Ocean. Contest. Seek your contest, Kilowatt trees, Antibar Ocean. 